Now there is one example of something that when you see it, you can immediately see how to factor it. And I want to tell you about it right now because this one is just so great that you see it, ching, you got to use it. And that is if you have the difference of two perfect squares. Let me show it to you first in general and then I'll look at some specifics and you can see how it goes. Suppose I have a squared minus b squared. This kind of animal can always be factored into two factors in a very, very easy way. Let's try to do it and see what the factors are and see that it's always going to work. The a squared, okay, I'm going to try aa. Now, the negative sign tells me that these are going to have opposite signs here because the product has to be negative. And again, since these are the same, I can put them any way I want. And the, the end result, the end product, has to be a minus b squared. So let me put a b and a b in here. And let's check and see what happens. a squared plus ab minus ab, note those middle terms annihilate themselves, and I am left with just a minus b squared. So in fact, this is the way to always factor the difference of two perfect squares. It's great. So whenever you see the difference of two perfect squares, it's fat city. Look, x squared minus 4. Notice that's the difference of two perfect squares, namely x squared and 2 squared. So what this equals is x plus 2, x minus 2. How easy is this to factor? You don't believe me, check. x squared, 2x minus 2x cancel, minus 4. Now a great mistake, by the way, would be to put a plus 4 and a minus 4 here, getting a little bit over ambitious. But remember, you have to put in the actual values whose products will be these values. Okay. Let me show you one that maybe doesn't look like it's going to lend itself nicely to this method, but it will. 16x squared minus 81, y to the fourth. Maybe it doesn't look like the difference of two perfect squares to you immediately, but you know what? It's the difference of two perfect squares. In fact, if it's easy, for, easier for you, you might want to actually write out those perfect squares. This is going to be something squared. What would it be? Well, here I'd need a 4, and here I'd need an x. Notice that 4x squared is 16x squared minus, now what kind of square is this thing? Well, that would be 9 squared multiplied by y squared. And notice that if you actually square this thing, I get an 81 and a y to the fourth. So this really is the difference of two perfect squares, and these are the values that are going to appear inside the, the factorization. So in fact, the factorization would look like this. It would look like the first term in the square in both places, and then plus or minus, and then the last term. Notice I'm just picking off the term, not the square part, just the term. Now this has a little square inside of it, but remember, just thinking about it as a something squared. So 9y squared and then the minus 9y squared. And you can check again to make sure that you're on the right track. Multiply us out. This would be 16x squared. Inside term would be uh, 36 xy squared, but then I have a minus 36xy squared, so they cancel, and the last times the last is a minus 81y to the fourth. So in fact, this gives me exactly this, and it factors quite nicely. And so there you have it. Now, um, you might be saying, hey, this is great. Does it also work when you have a plus? The answer is no. Shoot, sorry. But in fact, if you have the sum of two perfect squares, this kind of method, not going to cut it. So remember, the difference of two perfect squares, happy. The sum of two perfect squares, not good. Anyway, I don't want to leave on a negative note, so let's just recap that when you have the difference of two perfect squares, they factor with almost no thought at all. So that is a happy day. See you soon.